waiting for us. Hi, man. Hey, how are you? Good? good, good. It's finally great to actually meet you in person. So, yeah, <laughs> or kind of in person. Yeah, man. We are so happy to have you on board. And happy to share all this insight, helpful for all those out there. In this period of quarantine, you are creating something epic. I want to show you to the people before telling you the words. So guys, this is the topic of today. Is creating this background. Feel free to start explaining everything, man, about this. We are ready to hear your voice. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna have my girlfriend, she helps me on all my sets, uh, hold the camera just because I can't really do the whole selfie thing that well. So, all right, cool. Hello. All right. all right, so yeah, I wanted to do something a little bit different because being in quarantine, obviously you're kind of limited on what you can do and shoot with product videos. So I decided to use my TV as my background because I don't own a lot of like backdrops and such and what's really cool about that what I realized is that in Photoshop I can create unlimited and the background and the background actually is even backlit itself so it gives you a little backlight onto your product as well and yeah so I'm shooting Pringles as you can see we kind of uh, did a rush prompt too of resetting everything up because we shot it all and then you asked me to do a live and I was like oh crud so we had to put everything back together really fast <laughs> so also uh, what i have is we use wrapping paper as the ground and only actually for one of the shots which is the shots where the, the pringles pop up and down did we actually use the ground everything else is floating on a stick that i later mask out in after effects but you can also do in premiere or uh final cut or davinci resolve but <clears throat> a little bit about the lights that i'm running through is I got an Aperture 300 uh, right here, and I have a lantern set up on it. And the reason why I have the lantern set up on it is because I wanted to have something that's a nice, even top light. So really, you can do the same thing with any light that you're going to put above in a diffusion. And then right over here, I have another 300 Aperture, and then I have the diffusion and I'm having these lights typically a lot higher and farther away from the product than I ever would. Usually you want it like super, super close. But the thing is, is the only, well not the only negative, but one of the negatives that I've noticed with using the TV as a backdrop is you have to be very careful with the reflection and the lights will show in the reflection. So you just have to kind of raise your lights a little bit higher and push them a little bit farther away. But we can kind of hop in right here and I can show you guys a little bit, which is really cool. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot of people excited by the idea of the monitor as a background. Yeah. It's a game changer. This could be loved, right? Dude, this TV is a game changer. I think the same because uh, you, you, you did an Amazon, an Amazon idea, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, the Mandalorian kind of came up with it. They've been doing it a little bit, but this is so it's like a little bit smaller version of that. Um, so I can kind of show you guys right here, which is really cool. I can change, I'm just linking in with my laptop right now. And then so for each of the different backdrops, say I wanted to do this one, I can just pop into the blue one really fast. And now I'm in blue and you can see in the camera how it changes right there. And so you can be switching. And then if you want to do something even more fun, we kind of messed around a little bit and we're like, hey, well, what about doing live action backdrops? And for the pizza one for the Pringles, we, it never made the cut, but we're like, hey, yeah. let's, uh, I made this animation on After Effects, and what if you wanted to do one like this? It is a little bit laggy between here, but you can plug in the USB or go straight into your smart TV to kind of get like a moving pizza shot if you wanted to. So we thought that was kind of fun. And really, honestly, it's super, super easy to create these backdrops. Like if I go into Premiere right here, which is also amazing because if you have a backdrop for per se, like I wanted to do the Pringles and the red that you ordered online of a backdrop isn't the exact red. On here, you can literally just adjust it by going into your different colors of your backdrop like this and saying, hey, I want to do a red backdrop really fast, so. Just, just a second. Guys, I turned off the comment like someone suggested because uh, doesn't watch clearly 
and feel free to go forward just to say to people that is watching okay. it's time to be commenting for a few minutes okay no worries yeah so perfect just like that and then i can drag and make a gradient boom like that and then there's my backdrop and if i need to adjust it i can keep adjusting the colors easy just like that um and then i can kind of dive into a little bit of the tools that we use let me pull this red backdrop back up real fast Perfect. So honestly, this is for the Pringle shot. I got to be very gentle with these because we, what we did, oh, it already broke. <laughs> they, they, they broke a lot of times. So we had to do this quite a few times, but for the Pringle shot of popping through the can, what we did is we just took some paper straws and then we cut them. And as you can see very closely, we did super glue in between each one. We tried tons of different types of glue. There are tons of different types of glue. But what it does, what? I don't know who's next. Someone asked, are real those Pringles in the post? <laughs> yes, these are real Pringles. I can eat one right now. That's <laughs> probably not safe to do with all the glue, but you can definitely eat them. These are all the Pringles in the different cans that we're using. So we use different flavors for each one. As you can see how easily it broke, we shot the one, the one shot literally of it popping through the can in and out maybe 60, 60 times. And we had to build this about 10 different times. Sometimes we'd be bringing it over to the table and it just completely fall apart on our way over, which is very frustrating. But I'm gonna take the camera from Kendall to kind of show you guys how we did the shots of it popping in and out right here. Yeah. So almost kind of like a puppet, we took a hole down at the bottom right here and then there's a split in between the table. And then what she would be doing is she can pop it up really fast. It might be pretty gentle, but we just Holy same thing just like that. So, and then we drop it down really fast. And this one is a little bit of prompt too, because we had to rush with it. But so what you can see in the camera, I can show you is let me, perfect. So she's popping in and out. And then all I would be doing is pushing in with the slider and then we time it and we go one, two, three, and she would drop, boom. And then we, yeah, and then just in post, with simple wire removal and after effects, you can remove all those straws. It's kind of a tedious process. It's a little bit tedious, but you know, the end result's really cool. And sometimes like trying to do these things like on a lower budget, you know, that's kind of what you have to do. So, yeah. What, what's so cool about your gears use it? Because uh, people is used to see every everyday robots and uh, something, something like this. So feel free to, to yeah, share yeah. this. Yeah, let me uh, run through the stuff that I'm using. So first off, my camera, um, I really love the 1DX Mark II, even though it's like five years old, it's still one of the best DSLRs out there comparatively to probably the, the Mark III. But then I'm using a Sigma Art 35, one of my favorite lenses right there. And then right here, everybody always asks me why I have this and why you have a, I have an ND filter on the front of my camera for these. This is not an ND filter, this is a circular polarizer. And what it does is it helps control your highlight fall off. So if I go into here and, ooh, this is gonna be kind of bright, sorry. If I go into here and twist this, check out the screen, completely black, completely white. And so you can control the background, but also I can't really show you right now because <laughs> it's really hard with the details, but the highlights that hit the product. So when you have highlights that are hitting the product right here, when you're twisting the polarizer, you can remove most of the highlights that are hitting yeah. your product, so you don't have those ugly lights hitting on the side of your product and stuff like that. So that's kind of my go-to setup. And then I have an Edelchrome slider, which also has a motor, but for faster movement, I like to just do it by hand. Um, so, because these are really quality sliders. And then pretty much my go-to equipment is gaff tape, a lot of gaff tape, because there's a lot of things you're gonna have to be taping. And then we use this drill for pretty much a lot of our spinning shots, which I can show you next. Um, Kendall, yeah, we want to also the other stuff you did with the drill and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you were able to show something also about these other stuff. Yeah, perfect, yeah, I can easily do that. So I can show you guys, yeah, we're gonna just rip the chips out because we're not gonna be using the background yeah, yeah. anymore. And we try not to waste anything, so we're gonna be using that stick now. She's just gonna break it off the bottom right there. So that's pretty much how we built that. 
Yep, break it off. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these cans right here and we're going to shove this part through. Boom. You want her to do that real fast? I'll let her do that. Put that on. There you go. Do you want to throw a little bit of tape on there so it holds? Yeah. I tell them the comment for a few seconds. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to see all this insight. Can you turn off commenting? We just did. Let us know your thoughts, guys. Feel free to ask anything. Yeah, so she's just trying to set it up right now. Um, let me give her some tape. This is why we have the gap tape. But pretty much what we're doing is we're going to tape that same little thing that we put right there um, together. And that will create an even spin with a drill. The other thing that I like to use is this is a utensil holder. And then that stick is, whoops, sorry. The utensil holder. And then we took the stick and hot glue gunned it right there. And I'll put it like that with the Lazy Susan and just spin it in circles. So it'll rotate automatically like this. And that's how I got the opening shots. It'll just rotate. Um, but these are for more like the side shots. And then, perfect. Yeah, we'll just do it like that. That's good. So just to show people, I'm going to change. You're going to lower it. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to change the background really fast. Super simple. So we're just going to go in here because I already have my background saved. And then go to purple because we're on the purple can now. Perfect. Like that. And then let me fix this. Just like that. And then so. And then start spinning. Perfect. And that's just how we rotate. We're using a drill. And it's a little bit blurry, but I I push in and out like that. And then that's how I got all those shots um, that were sideways with the Pringles spinning. And now I can show you guys how we did the Pringles spinning. So what we did for the Pringles spinning shot is we just took a Pringle like this and we connected it to a straw on a nail with super glue. Really simple, same concept. So she's gonna connect it right back to the drill like that with the straw. Don't watch me, it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> perfect, just like that. Yeah. And then just yeah. it sideways. Yeah, like that, yeah. So, perfect. And then we would just do the same exact thing, and that's how we, we got these shots right here. As you can see, oh, no, that's not going to work. But, yeah, so as you can see, it looks pretty. If I just even just punch in like that, you can kind of see, and that's how we got the rotating Pringle. Cool. Yeah. And then... So for the stacks of different, uh, so for example, with the barbecue flavor right here, there's different uh, like vegetables. And so we wanted to do that. And our, our first attempt is we built something like this where we stacked them all up. But the problem was in masking them out in rotation, they would accidentally cover each other. So our next step was to take uh, barbecue skewers, like the wood ones and paint them blue, right? And then we would just go like this and we went to a blue backdrop so we could pretty much blue screen it out. And then we just added them all uh, in post on top of each other with a can. So like that. And then use my handy dandy to always for vegetables or anything, spritz bottle, spray you in the face. So <laughs> just like that. And then get some nice droplets on it. And then we would rotate it. Very this is cool. so beautiful. Yeah, but like honestly, this TV. I think a lot of tests you did. Yeah, <laughs> because just... I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember a few months ago you started with uh, this back. It took us uh, uh, about the, the three days. Table. This is amazing, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it took us about three days to get it right and really mess around with the like the backdrops. But like I said, if the backdrop was wrong, I'd just go into Photoshop right on the TV and oh. fix it so it'd be the same exact color or as close as we could. And then um, a lot of, most of all the magic is really, you know, after that is done in post with just masking and lining everything up and finding the right music to go with it. I kind of wanted to go with like the whole Chips Ahoy vibe, if you don't remember those commercials from back in the 90s with, you know, where they're dancing with the live like big band music. So, um, and then, yeah, so for the, Lazy Susan part, I can just show you guys that too. I just have this automatic one right here and we'd do this. Boom, she's gonna slip slip on the utensil holder just like that. 
nice and easy. And then we just flip it on and it will spin. And I can change this right here to the red one. Let's see, going red, easy peasy like that. And coming into here, got to fix it. This is a little bit taller than what I normally would do, but as you can see, let me turn this, these off. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of bright, unfortunately. Um, there we go. So, nope, just did it again, sorry. <laughs> okay, perfect, just like that. And as you can see in the camera, it's just giving you a nice yeah. even spin. And so we'd just be getting that and a nice even spin. And that's how I did the intro shots for everything. Yeah. Really smart. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> It was definitely it was definitely an interesting process. So, and working with Pringles is a little hard. I recommend if you're going to do a product, you know, find something a little bit, maybe a little bit stronger than Pringles. Uh, they're not the greatest, but um, the other things that we kind of came up with is, you know, for the potatoes, this is what we did. We just used a regular size potato. When you green screen them, you can make them any size that you want, and it's on a blue stick. And then same with the pepper right here. Same whole thing. We just spritz it down. It's on a blue stick and would use the drill to spin everything. It keeps it very, very um, easy to do. Once you get it down, it's actually super easy. But yeah, the TV, honestly, the, the negative things for your TV is that if you can't get your TV light bright enough, it makes it a little difficult. So what you're going to want to do is, oh, thank you, Gemma. What you're going to want to do is go into your settings and be able to turn your brightness all the way up on your TV. That's like the first thing. And then the other thing, like I mentioned before, is glares. Like if I lower this down a little bit or try to make it a little, push it in a little bit more, which where I typically would have it, you really have to watch the reflections in the TV. And I definitely did catch reflections in the video on the TV, but what I did was simply just duplicate the, the, the layer, mask out a section right next to that uh, highlighted area on the backdrop, and then just position it over and feather it and you can cover up those hot spots as well. So that was uh, part of the kind of the trick of fixing a few of the reflections and glares. So that's definitely something that you want to like, be, be aware of when you're working with the TV as your backdrop because it's very reflective and make sure like most of your surfaces are not super have anything reflective on the ground. So yeah. Thank I'm you. showing again your final uh, final results because someone was only now online. Oh, perfect. so guys, this is the final results. Oh. <laughs> Do you have also ready the other setup you used for the the other stuff we shared? The thrill that. Uh... Yeah, yeah. We I can show you guys with the tomato again. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 So the way that I got the different spinning shots of the different flavors and the tomatoes. For the barbecue flavor, it was tomatoes, onions, and peppers. What we did is we literally connected a stick, a blue stick like this, and we'd be on a blue screen uh, to, to uh, just key light it out. But we're spinning a tomato like that on a blue barbecue stick on a drill. And just like that, simple, very simple. But it, it works very well too. and. Like I said, I mean, the TV gives a very nice backlight to everything. So it gives you a very like uh, illuminated look, which is and a very clean look. So you don't have to worry about wrinkles with your backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm not saying it's perfect because, you you know, you're very constricted to the size of your backdrop when using a TV. But it's also very nice if you don't have any backdrops. So. Yeah, I showed sure for the last time this one. Do you want to share some tips uh, that you, uh, I want to show to the people also your YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, I want to do a quick shout out on Austin. We love so much all his works. We shared in the end of the year videos a couple of sheen of this project. Feel free to add some words about uh, this work in Mongolia. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so Mongolia, that was actually a very cool project that I got to do where this tourism company out there, they work with eagle hunters. And so I was out there for a week actually filming with them in negative – it, negative 40 degree weather it got so cold and there's a lot of factors that you have to really worry about when you're uh filming that cold of a condition because your batteries and stuff like that are things that will drain very very fast and these people don't live in a very modern town per se so like they only have one outlet every single night so i was up every single night plugging in all the gear and making sure everything was recharged because i can only charge one thing at a time and you would probably get half life on most of your batteries and equipment when you're out there. But if you're in the shadows, you got about two minutes on your equipment. So you couldn't be in the shadows using a lot of your equipment. Unfortunately, at one point, my drone remote died while the drone was flying. And the, the drone just got stuck in hover mode, like five feet in the air. And I couldn't, I didn't know what to do to pull it down. So I had to rip, jump up in the sky and rip it out and then rip the battery off as the propellers were flying because there's no way to shut it off. So there's definitely, you know, doing these things are a lot, a lot of fun, but also there's a lot of uh, precautions and things that you learn along the way from doing this kind of work, so. <laughs> so, man, I'm so happy for your works, and uh, I want to ask you, since you did this hour, some insight about uh, homework, and also you work in the travel niche. Feel free to share anything you think could be relevant for young aspiring filmmakers since you have started a few years ago. So I think could be really inspiring for the people hear your point of view and share uh, anything like that. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, yeah, so I've been doing filmmaking now for three and a half years and I kind of just jumped headfirst into it sold my Xbox to buy my first camera and started filming. And that's honestly like the biggest advice that I can give you is I think a lot of people, and I mean, I don't want to make like a judgment or anything, but they want to do filmmaking, but they don't know where to start. And the reality is you just have to start filming, put that camera in your hands and just start shooting everything you can. Anything that like inspires you, anything that's interesting, that's going to make a lot better for you because that's going to be work that you're going to want to do. But then not only that, the other factor is, and I do this and anybody does this that is a filmmaker, is that you always want to keep learning. There's never a point in filmmaking that you know everything. I'm always learning. I'm definitely a student of it. I'll be, YouTube is probably the best school online. That's where I learn most of my stuff is just watching people's videos, dissecting them, watching tutorials when there was tutorials and what I was thinking. And then from there, you start taking all of that and you find your own creative stroke. You kind of take inspiration from other people and then you find your own. And you try not to, okay. I'm not I'm saying not copy people, but you want to find your own rhythm because that's what's going to stand out to clients and work is not doing the same thing that everybody else does, but finding this your own is the reason, This is the reason why we invited you to, to be as guests today because we love people that take inspiration and create their personal journey. This is so important and this is also also the mission of Filmmakers World to, to show all talented people that have a personal point of view, a personal vision and contribute to inspire all the world. Yes, thank you. I love Filmmakers World. Honestly, one of the, my most favorite channels out there because you post so much amazing stuff and I learn so much and I see like there's all different levels too, which I love is not, you're not only posting like the high end, high end, but you're posting stuff like mine where I'm not like working with a lot of gear or people that are just doing handheld stuff. And I really appreciate that because every point and every level is all great filmmaking, you know, so it's all art and it's all amazing. So I really appreciate what you do as well, man. Thanks so much. We, we are so thankful. I pinned a, a question from the community. Guys, feel free to ask anything in the comment. I try to pin the most relevant. What is the hardest thing you have had to learn from that you can share with us? Ooh, the hardest thing that I've had to learn is patience. Patience is honestly probably, it's super, super hard. The, especially with these product videos, they seem very simple, but it is a lot of work just for those. I think the video that ended up being 15, 20 seconds, that took me at least 
five days of straight work just to do those 15 seconds. You have to be very patient. And when you're getting upset and things are not working right, because things are always going to not work right on a set. There's always a point during any shoot that you're on that something's going wrong is just to eventually you'll get used to it a little bit more and more and try to calm down a little bit more, but things are going to go wrong. I mean, you're working with technology and equipment, things fail all the time, you know, especially if you're trying to hot glue gun Pringles together, things are going to fall apart. So just learning patience and understanding that you're going to make it through it. And then my other thing is that, oh, sorry. So the assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good assistant, a good assistant is, is important. <laughs> Honestly, these product videos, I couldn't do them by myself. It, it, it's nice to have helping hands. I know not everybody does, but you can get very creative. I've seen people uh, show me like emulations of what I created that inspired them and they did it all by themselves and they look amazing. So it is possible. It just sometimes you need a helping hand to spin the drill while you're doing the shot. So, um, but yeah, the other thing that I would say that I've learned and it's taken me a long time to learn is that kind of like being an athlete in, in a way, filmmaking is some days you're going to have good days when you're on set and you're making a film and the creative juices are flowing and everything. And some days you're not, not all of your videos are going to be one better than the next one better than the next. Sometimes you're going to be rocking your A game and other times it's going to be your C game. But the trick is to get your lower level or the days that you're not doing as well up close enough that it's not going to affect you and your work, you know? So I've kind of learned that along the way. It's not, not everything that you're going to create is amazing. You know, it's a, just a learning process. So. People agree with you. I, I read this, this got a, this got a good viral, viral. Hmm. I appreciate it. I agree. Someone asked if you use it, manual focus. Yeah. And so, so with the one DX, the Mark II, and a lot of the DSLR cameras now, your autofocus is amazing. And that just eliminates one other thing that you have to do. I mean, it's not perfect. Sometimes you'll be, it'll be stabbing around. It just really depends on your, your lighting. Um, but for certain shots, so I have a whiskey video that's very similar. There's, I use a Liowa Pro Blends to drop in. And I also would, uh, for an opening shot of the whiskey, that was all by hand where I stuck the slider to my pants and I'd be pulling manual focus because when you're doing fast movements like that, I'll use manual focus because the autofocus does not keep up. It's just really in certain situations. If I don't have to use the manual focus, I won't because the autofocus is pretty amazing and doing a lot of run and gun style stuff. I don't have um, uh, somebody to help me pull focus. So, but if not, then I will be just using manual focus for anything that's faster or anything where I'm having problems, I'll just switch to manual focus or if it's a manual lens like the, the probe lens. So, yeah. Yeah. Another guy asked if you use the 4K 10 bit for this kind of product videos. Um, so I'm sure I shoot all my product. I shoot all my videos now at 4K. Um, I just, I, I personally think like I can see the quality difference. I mean, I still see people get amazing things at 1080 but I just like to have that, that safety to play with. Um, but I don't know, I don't think that the 1DX Mark II shoots 10 bit, if I remember correctly. I know the Mark III does, uh, but I don't think the Mark II shoots 10 bit. So, yeah. I pinned another one. What was your first project? My first project that I collaborated on was, um, so, well, my first project that I ever did was I filmed the project of my hometown. That's when I sold all my stuff uh, to buy a camera. And I ran around for three months capturing sunrises and sunsets of my town. And I made a very like travel-esque video inspired by Sam Colder, that kind of style. And that bl blew up on YouTube as like my first video. And I was like, ah, right then I, I thought I was like, I'm gonna make it, like I'm good. And people are telling me that they're gonna hire me for all this work. I don't think I got a paid job <laughs> for a whole year, half, year and a half after that. So it was a long process into that. And thank goodness I didn't because if somebody paid me for work back then, I didn't, I didn't even know what ISO or Aperture or any of that was. I just shot, I switched it to SCN on the top of the Sony camera because I thought that looked really good. So I was like, this will work. And I shot everything like that until I actually learned. So it was good that I wasn't paid for anything. That was my first like video I made. And then my first collaboration project is I filmed for a professional bull rider at his school. 
I wanted to learn how to do bull riding. So I collaborated with him and said, hey, if you teach me how to do bull riding, I'll film some work for you. And so I filmed him some tutorials for him and he let me ride some bulls for free. So that was my first collaboration project that I did. And I was down in Santa Maria with Gary. It's important to share this experience because uh, I, I want to add also something about the social media. What do you think? Social media is helping you in uh, take more works in uh, build better your brand, uh, your personal branding? Yeah, what do I mean, you there's, there's definitely pluses and minuses to it, but I've noticed um, you got to find like where your niche is with people that are interested in your work. Um, I'm in two amazing groups on Facebook. I'm in Black With No Cream and Full Time Filmmakers, both of those groups, and they have huge communities and not only from the teachings, but you can post your stuff there and you can get feedback. And that's kind of where I started getting a lot of uh, notice for my work. And from there, people would see my work. And every single time that I posted a video, like for example, this Pringles video, I did this all for free, money out of my own pocket. I'm not getting paid by Pringles or the TV company or anything like that. But I want to A, make my skills better. B, every time I post something and put something new out there, it shows that I'm creating and I always get offers for jobs once I post something new. So that's why I'm always creating. I'm always trying to make my skills better, but also trying to get my work seen. And if you're sitting around waiting for work, I just personally, when you're starting out like me, it just, it's never, it's never going to happen. You have to keep creating and keep making. So, yeah. Read yourself last, the last pin of the moment. Read yourself. Inspiring. Thank you, Usain. I think you will have a lot of new followers from this live. People that loved so much this live. I personally loved so much. And so happy to have you in this one. And Thank you so much. And so again, thanks so much, man. Yeah, and, uh, it was a lot of fun. I was pretty nervous. That's why I was having Kendall hold the camera at first. My hands were pretty shaky. So I'm so, I'm so. I'm used to talking in front of. So I'm, I like being behind the camera. So this is all new for me. No problem. This is all only the first one together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, I want to thanks so much for watching to everyone. Let's uh, go into our feed for those that doesn't watch yet the post of Austin is online on our feed and for the next 24 hours there's online also this live so guys thanks so much again thanks so much Austin yeah thank I'm you. So happy to have you thank you so much for having me I, I I loved it thank you guys and thank you for everybody that's joining in people and I'm always happy to answer questions if people reach out to me genuinely. Don't like bombard me yeah. with tons of stuff. But if you have questions and are curious about things, I love helping people out. Um, I find it very important for everybody to help each other out in this community. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah I'm not oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. So Thank thanks so much. Again. Thanks so much again, man. Yeah, no problem. I'm so happy to be here. And uh, see you soon. Let's chat next.